Greetings and a warm welcome from me, astrologer Patrick Arundel. Today, in the latest of my deep dive videos, I'm going to explore the Aquarius full moon, which occurs across the 1st or the 2nd of August, depending on where you live, and can also be known as the Sturgeon moon. Its impact is going to be over the following two weeks. First up, I'm going to share with you how I'm going to structure the video. I'll tell you exactly when this event is occurring in all the major cities of the world. I'll explain briefly what a full moon is from a technical viewpoint, but then go on to share with you what an Aquarius full moon represents, but then take a look at the event chart based on this particular Aquarius full moon to see what other planetary influences are feeding in and are going to influence things for us all collectively over the next two weeks. Now, if you are new to my channel, thank you so much for joining us. This is very much a community. If you have any thoughts, please do share them. I do try to interact with each one. If you're a returning visitor, thank you so much for joining me once more. And I'd be honoured if you would subscribe. I have noticed that even if you subscribe, if you're not getting alerts, Look in the back of YouTube and it does give you an option to turn on your notifications because I did that for myself and realised that I hadn't been notified of some of the channels that I follow and their updates. Now I'd just like to tell you about a very special opportunity. Year 2023 is speeding by, year 24 racing towards us. If you order from me now your year 2024 personal horoscope forecast based on your unique birth data, I will prepare for you the rest of year 2023 free of charge. But also you'll get 30% off and your life roadmap character analysis. This combination will give you searing insights, but the roadmap particularly will help you to understand more intimately some of the patterns that have played out in your existence so far and how you can work with them more astutely going forwards. Please see the link beneath this video for more information. So welcome, so Aquarius full moon, it occurs at 9 degrees and 15 minutes and on the screen now you can see where it occurs in all the major cities of the world. So Los Angeles, New York, London, Johannesburg, it's on the 1st and New Delhi just by one minute and Sydney on the 2nd. So what is a full moon? Well the moon is the speediest uh, uh, component of astrology, speediest planet, and what we have with a full moon is it's facing the sun. So the sun is in the grand and proud Leo, and the moon is in the democratic republic of Aquarius. So the moon's very much about our inner world, our sensitivity, our need for security and nurture, but the position of the sun is in the part of its journey, which is very much about investing in our individuality and manifesting our outer actions in quite a dramatic but self-confident and proud way. So the sun is opposed by the moon. So if you think about it, it's absolutely the opposite of a new moon, which occurs on the 16th of August in Leo, because it's not an integration of the two energies. It's actually uh, an opposition. So it's tension building. So if going into this full moon, you do feel a little bit on edge or things feel closer to the surface in terms of your emotions, that's why, because our inner world is jarring with our outer desire to achieve and gain recognition. Then we need to just think about what the full moon in Aquarius is. The sign of Aquarius is very much about the collective, it's about friendship, can be about our future plans, because this particular event occurs in the first decan of Aquarius, it has got a Uranian influence in it, which makes it a bit more rebellious. And of course, the sign of Aquarius can be very much about our network, our friendships, our alliances, but critically, 
our higher truth and principles. Whereas the sun in Leo is very much more to do with individual hopes. It's not to say the moon in Aquarius can't be individualistic, but it still has uh, a, an awareness to the collective. Whereas the sun in Leo is very much about expressing our individuality. So it's a challenge in a way, because the sun in Leo wants all the attention. It's radiant, it's magnificent. And of course it desires recognition, praise, even adoration, but at the very minimum, uh, the sun in Leo requires respect. So if there is any counter energies coming from uh, the moon in Aquarius, which is outspoken, can be blunt, and very much about in terms in, in being connected to higher truths, because that's the energy of Uranus, that can disrupt that desire of the sun in Leo, which is much more ego driven, to be honest, to manifest what it wants. So in our lives, we could find ourselves a bit conflicted between what we want to do for ourselves as individuals, but what the expectations of others are that we're connected to. So for example, in a love relationship, if one of you is more interested in pursuing hobbies and interests and friendships than the other, that could create some disturbance over the next couple of weeks. If on the other hand, you're uh, living your life and focusing on something that's really very important to you as an individual, it may be very much more difficult to stay attuned to what other people are thinking or feeling, and that can create some reactions too. So that's essentially what's going on with an Aquarius full moon. Now, because of the location at nine degrees and 15 minutes, if we take an orb of three degrees either side, from six degrees to 12 degrees, we still get a very powerful imprint from this event. So if you are a fixed sign, so that's Taurus, Leo, Scorpio, or Aquarius, and you have planets in between six and 12 degrees in any of those four fixed signs, or even if, if you're not a fixed sun sign, but you have other fixed players within your natal chart, the chances are this event is going to impact on them in a much uh, more meaningful way. Now, I'm just sharing on the screen for you now, the solar event chart. Decided to keep it simple this time. And you can see the sun, as we would expect, is in house five, because we're erecting this chart as a collective, starting at naught degrees Aries, the vernal point, because that's when the zodiac begins. So we can all relate to this. And of course, the moon is up there in the friendly, but sometimes detached, 11th house. So that's another energy that can play out. The sun's very much about innate warmth and radiance, clearly. Whereas the moon in Aquarius is very cool. You know, it's uh, assessing things in a little bit more of a logical way. Whereas the sun is very much about passion. So that is another uh, uh, reverberation that can go between the two. But we just need to be mindful that with Saturn in the 12th house and in retrograde in Pisces, which is really pushing us to become much more conscious of our emotional welfare and the spiritual and psychological domains, that's directly applying to Mercury. And Mercury in its home zone of, of Virgo is very much about precision, but it can be a little bit meticulous. So when you put Saturn opposing Mercury, it intensifies the potential for people to be a little bit more uh, attuned to things that aren't quite right. So the small picture is magnified by Mercury being um, influenced by the cool energies of Saturn. We also have Mars in Virgo as well, which in some ways is, is a good position for Mars insofar as it's less egotistical. It's more about trying to help others. And that's actually forging a stunning angle with Jupiter, which you can see down there in house two. If financial situations uh, have been impacting upon you, 
I feel that this gives us all a little bit more hope that some more positive news could creep in, even if, you know, the cost of living increases and the increases in interest charges and so forth have been felt by many of us. Also, uh, it's worth just being mindful of the fact that Venus, now in its retrograde and in the same sign as Leo, and also very needing of recognition and love and affection, is in a very complex angle with Pluto. So it's a quincunx, 150 degrees. And this suggests over the next couple of weeks that with the Saturn opposition to Mercury, relationships generally trying to balance between what we want to do as an individual and what's expected of us could be affected by the picky and rather critical energy of Mercury being influenced by Saturn, which can also uh, see us seeing things as a glass half empty, but also because Venus is in that complex angle with Pluto, the planet of power. So when it comes to love relationships, creative ventures, expressing our talents, I think what Pluto comes along and applies a very traditional set of energies to it. So even if we do want to manifest our gloriousness through the Sun and Venus in Leo, and Jupiter is broadly uh, T-square in this event, so it can add some extra sort of enthusiasm, I feel that it's important to understand how things will be seen or how uh, people who are more stuck in their ways or a bit more hidebound, a bit more uh, into how it was always done. So if you're trying to do something that's a little bit more progressive and different, just be aware that that could be viewed in a more censorious way by the position of Pluto. Okay, let's go through each of the 12 zodiac signs from Aries through to Pisces and give you a flavour of what you can expect over the next two weeks. So Aries, over the summer months you've had a succession of influences in your sister fire sign of Leo and now it's the Sun and the retreating Venus. But through that period of time, despite the fact that you may have reached out and had some fun moments and sociable meetups, perhaps even some romantic sparkle. It's just that since Saturn moved into your 12th house, it really is asking you to look at some very tender issues or it's eroded a little bit your drive and your desire to join up and connect with others quite as much as you could have done. So I think over the next couple of weeks, one of the pleasing things that can happen is you can hear from people you haven't heard from for a while. And it could be some good friends that have just had other priorities or preoccupations. Everyone's very, very busy. This stuff does happen, we all know that. So there is an opportunity to reconnect, which is lovely. And of course that can be one of the uh, virtues of the Venus retrograde as well. It's just on this next two week period, how are you going to respond to Saturn being in an opposition to Mercury? If there is something that you've been thinking a lot about, maybe around a love affair, maybe about your own way of being and expressing yourself, there could be a tendency to really focus in on that to such a degree that it actually diminishes your desire to venture out. So just be conscious that Saturn could be having quite a pernicious effect on your drive, your confidence and your desire to get stuck in and be more sociable. But at a practical level, Jupiter's glorious link to Mars suggests you could do something around your resources that's very constructive over the next couple of weeks and gives you more confidence about the direction of travel the moon in Aquarius that you're taking. So that is very reassuring. But with Venus in your fifth house, in that rather political link to Pluto, I think around all sorts of relationships, you're just becoming much more conscious of who holds the power. And it's a good thing to become much more au fait with this because then when you encounter any, anybody new in a social situation or a potential romantic interest, you're so much more geared up to how it is in terms of the big picture because your enthusiasm, your passion, 
uh, your fun, your uh, personality is often so warm, but you do need to just be quite watchful. And the experiences that you've gained over recent times are informing the choices that you're making. So I would say that the fifth house is about speculation. I would say you can still speculate, but just be very conscious of just being mindful that life is complex at times and we just need to be a little bit cautious too. So Taurus, the thing about this full moon is it is going to drive your feelings much closer to the surface. If you're someone who does like to be discreet and not be too open, that could feel a little bit uncomfortable. But the Sun and your ruler Venus are in the part of your situation that are very much to do with nurturing your emotional well-being and perhaps even making some changes and improvements to where you live. So the moon in the 10th house could be something to do with your professional situation that may require your attention, perhaps you're needing to work hard just at a point when you may want to uh, spend more time within your home or family or extended family because that is where the nurture comes. So interesting dimension for you with Saturn in an opposition with Mercury. I feel that Saturn uh, op opposite Mercury could make you a little bit more aware of the limitations of certain involvements you have, particularly in the social dimension. But we can't argue with Jupiter in your sign in a stunning link to Mars. So if everything feels right, and that's really what the moon's asking us to be guided by, there could be something that happens in terms of a creative output or even your love life, which is very, very exciting. But whatever unfolds for you over the next two weeks, I think the chances are other people are going to know about it because the moon is so close to the surface. So Gemini, for you, the full moon occurs in your ninth house. That's very much to do with higher truths. And you could find yourself talking about something over the next couple of weeks. And because uh, Saturn is in a very assertive part of your situation and applying to your ruler in quite a tough way, if there is a sensitive issue that you feel does need to be aired, the chances are you are going to say how you feel. But if there isn't a big issue going on for you at the moment, I just feel that you may want to inject your everyday routine with a bit more variety, spontaneity and freedom. And why not too? So cancer, the full moon for you, occurs in the very deep and passionate and psychological eighth house, even though it's housed in Aquarius. So for you, I feel that this can see you thinking about your values in a little bit of a different way over the next couple of weeks, or evaluating who you link to in terms of how they understand your worth in a situation. And because Saturn is applying to Mercury across your ninth and third house axes, if there is something that needs to be said, the chances are you're going to be much more direct. People uh, don't often see you being that uh, direct because you have a natural dislike of confrontation. And it's not to say you're going to be confrontational here, but I feel you could be frank. So for example, in a close relationship, if a partner or even your kids have got a bit of a laissez-faire attitude to spending money and you don't feel that they're hearing what you're saying, it could be that you're about to let them know in a much clearer way what your expectations are. So Leo, on this full moon, your single-mindedness that you've been shown for some time now, particularly with the help of Mars when it was passing through your sign for six weeks, and Mercury, and now you have Venus in a retrograde, but you have the Sun with you, all of that has given you a lot of encouragement to manifest your individual hopes and desires. Whereas the moon on the other side of the heavens could see someone speak up and and say that they can't remember that the last time they uh, spent time with you or had a conversation. The best way to deal with this is by not being hostile. It may be that you've had to really be single-minded in order to pursue something that's vitally important to you. So if you can just take a little moment to explain and keep the key people involved the next couple of weeks, I don't think it will be so much of an issue. 
There's no denying, however, that a financial matter could reach a bit of a crunch point because of Mars's opposition to Mercury. But also, obviously, Jupiter in your sector of success is forging a brilliant link to Mars in your sector of everyday money. So a new opportunity could manifest itself over the next couple of weeks and therefore the Moon in Aquarius could be a new partnership developing but within that partnership it will be important to recognise the other person's input or what the terms of reference are required on either side. But in, a, on, in an ongoing situation such as a domestic or or family or personal relationship I do feel that you are looking for people to understand where you are coming from and if it is around a financial issue there could be some quite uh, strident conversations between you. So Virgo this is a very interesting full moon in a way because the 6th 12th house full moon with the moon being in the 6th is asking you to make sure your life is productive and organized as possible nothing new there for you but the sun's in house 12 which means that someone that you work with or associate with could be feeling a little bit picky about some of the things that they feel you should be doing but the thing is that with saturn in your seventh house opposing your ruler in your own sign if you feel that someone is being unfair i think you're definitely going to find a way to stand up for yourself particularly as Mars in Virgo links so brilliantly to Jupiter and I think that perhaps what's going on here is that maybe someone's let something build up that should have been said and resolved long ago which has seen it really get out of, of, of perspective but just be aware that someone around you may not be as trustworthy and as honest and it could be a colleague and just make sure that whatever you can influence and control you're carrying out your tasks with a great deal of care and attention to detail i know that's your normal mode of being but someone could just be uh, that little bit more picky and critical than usual so libra for you the moon is in the fifth house very much to do uh, with sociability interaction and ironically a little bit of a leo energy whereas the sun is in the more aquarius energy to do with the collective your friendships your social interactions and your long-term future is it possible that you do need to be i don't want to use the word selfish but certainly more singular in your approach to how you manage your time that old saying that we can't keep all of the people all of the time does come to mind. But over the next couple of weeks, because Saturn is in a very conscientious part of your situation, but Mercury is in a more psychological one and they're in opposition, I feel that connecting to the people that are good for your soul and your spirits is important. Sometimes that's not even people we don't dislike that we don't necessarily spend so much time with but just be aware that you need to feed the things that are good for you that make you feel whole and encourage you to focus on what enables you to demonstrate your flair creativity and have fun so don't let anyone put a guilt trip on you because you can't keep up with all of those people all of the time so Scorpio, over the last few months, there's been an enormous amount of activity on your professional sector or how you connect with the wider world or how you're manifesting your goals and ambitions. First of all, it came from the arrival of Venus. Then we had Mars. Then we had Mercury. And of course, we've got the Sun. We still got the Sun and Venus in your 10th house and they can help you to reach for the stars when it comes to those big hopes that you have. But this full moon is just a timely reminder that it's also important to feed your soul. And as much as uh, there's that activity in the sign of Leo, there's also the social activity of Mars and Mercury in Virgo. It's just that Mercury is opposed by Saturn on this event. So maybe around one friendship or connection, things are a bit tense. Fortunately, Mars is in a big angle to Jupiter. So there can be another association that could go from strength to strength. But whatever's going on for you, if you feel you need to take an evening out or a day off, 
have that proverbial duvet day with the moon in your fourth house and also in the more detached sign of Aquarius. If you just feel that you want to have some you time and escape some of those demands and pressures even if they've been enjoyable or important to you i think it is important to just have some time to recharge and look after your emotional well-being so sagittarius the full moon for you is in house three could stimulate greater interaction in your community with a sibling perhaps because the sun and venus despite the retrograde are in a very exciting adventurous part of your situation there may be some details or correspondence emails text messages letters that you need to engage with at the heart of the situation now your professional prospects look really bright with a, a, a fantastic angle between mars and jupiter and this can give you a, a lot of thrust so if you are wanting to go for an opportunity just make sure that you don't rush that correspondence that could be something that trips you up also of course with saturn in that opposition with mercury just balancing what you're trying to achieve at the moment with the thread of communication and the time you have it is really important because there could be some home demands with saturn in the fourth house and maybe just when the big opportunity comes up there may be part of you that feels slightly inhibited to go for it but i think Mars in that wonderful trine with Jupiter probably is going to push back on the more limiting energies of Saturn opposite Mercury. It's just about the detail. So those correspondence, those conversations that are very important, even where it's a, a case of uh, ringing someone up that you know and just listening to their viewpoint can help to just guide you in just the right direction. So Capricorn, if you're buying or selling anything over the next two weeks or discussing an important financial matter or even your budget, it's important that you stay true to what you really believe is right because the moon is in your sector of personal values but crucially your self-worth. So if someone sees something in a markedly different way, it doesn't mean that you're wrong to have that view. It's what's important to you. But your ruler Saturn is uh, pressing Mercury, the planet of communication, in quite a powerful way. So if there does need to be a discussion, the chances are you're going to want to cut through and really make your point in a very crisp, even uh, rather direct way. But true to say, Mars is in a glorious link with Jupiter. So if there is something that's really exciting you at the moment, and you can work collaboratively with someone on a financial basis, as long as it's someone who really understands what your terms of reference are, and you understand theirs, there is the potential for something to really grow, pick up speed and expand over this next fortnight. So Aquarius, the next couple of weeks uh, is going to see a critical issue around the relationship, but I must stress, it doesn't necessarily have to be a personal one. In fact, your romantic situation could be really quite harmonious with Venus in your seventh house. Of course, it is retracing its steps. If you're single, perhaps you have been thinking about someone from your past. Perhaps there is someone on your cosmic radar that you're still deciding what to do about. But I think in any kind of existing relationship, whether it's with a colleague, a family member, or perhaps even a friend, what this particular full moon is asking you to do is to make sure that you feel heard, that when you set your boundaries, they are listened to. And that's the critical factor because I feel that Venus, uh, through its long transit in Leo, has been giving you the opportunity to demonstrate that very fair side of your nature. And of course, Mercury was in your seventh house, which added a bit more detachment, very much in keeping with your sign. Before that, perhaps Mars was seeing you being a bit feistier, setting your boundaries, but there is an opportunity to come to some kind of accord through this full moon. But it does require people to be fair, and particularly around a financial matter. Why is that? Because Saturn is opposing Mercury across your second and eighth houses in a very tense way. So if someone's being a bit picky or a little bit mean or miserly, it could be something that tests your 
um, the side of you that can be very generous in your uh, approach to situations, very much the humanitarian, but if someone's really taken your goodwill for granted, I think you will put your foot down. But with Mars and Jupiter in a stunning alliance on this event, there can also be some good news around the property matter that ensues really quite soon. Pisces, this full moon occurs in the most spiritual and psychological part of its journey for you personally. This gives you an opportunity to tune in to that side of you that has uh, a wonderful appreciation of healing, natural medicine, peace, quiet and tranquility. It's just the sun is in a very rat-a-tat -tat, uh, practical part of your situation asking you to be conscious of responsibilities and obligations and some of those could start to tire you a little bit more over the next two weeks. You can sometimes push yourself and go the extra mile to help those, particularly those that you're really invested in. But it's important to have boundaries. Now Mars's angle to Jupiter is going to help you to express what you need to say with enthusiasm, with passion, but with Saturn in your sign in an opposition to Mercury, there could be the potential if you feel challenged, unappreciated, run down, to be a bit snappy and a bit reactive and make your point in quite a piercing way. So important to use the energy of Mars to know when to say no, particularly to when people just assume of your goodwill, the person who will always cover that extra shift, the person that will always do the domestic chores. I think at the moment you need to look after the most sensitive part of yourself. And if that means going for some lovely walks in nature, having some long soaks in the bath, going for a spa day, perhaps having a massage, all of those things will be beautifully timed on this particular full moon. It's been a real pleasure being with you. Thank you so much for joining me. Please, would you like, comment, share or subscribe?